so many Ravens fans would love if this happened. Let's get into our first question. It came from my guy, BB. He said, should the Ravens try to go after Chris Jones? EDC needs to get on that phone and make a move to solidify the defensive tackle position. Ravens can make this work. Now, that, that would be a dream scenario. Um, if this was mad, and I would try it all day. Uh, I, I wouldn't be mad. I don't think any Ravens fan would be mad at that move at all like chris jones to the ravens like a defense a disruptive defensive a, a consistently disruptive defensive lineman added to the baltimore ravens defense and that can only make them i mean obviously it would make them better as chris jones but especially that would help so much with the loss of the temporary loss of marlon humphrey but then think about when he gets back that will make them even better. That will make every single body job that much easier if they had a Chris Jones. I would love it. I would be all for it. EDC, you, do I need to send a DM or something like that? But I, I would love if it happened, but I just don't see it happening. I, I don't foresee the Ravens going after Chris Jones, especially because the only holdup right now with him and KC is the contract. It's the deal. It's the money. So with KC, uh, they, they can make it happen. And, and if the Ravens were to add him, they could make something happen too, but I just I don't see them spending a bunch of money right there on the defensive line, uh, especially when they got mad at BK coming up. Well, I mean, this is the last year of his contract, um, and, and I mean, hey, adding a quality veteran, a Super Bowl winning veteran, and I mean, you know what, the, vet, the word veteran, that don't even make, we need a better word than that. A adding a Super Bowl quality player, a baller. That would you could never have enough of those, never. Especially if they still playing at a high level like Chris Jones has been. Um, but I just don't see it going down. Next question came from my guy Jarvis. He said, "Do you see Keaton Mitchell taking Justice Hill's spot?" Uh, no, not right now. Uh, at least uh, because Justice Hill is big on special teams. Keaton Mitchell he would have to earn his role on special teams, and he would have to earn his role via special teams. But Justice Hill is holding that down right now. Uh, or if you're talking about as sort of that third running back. Um, early on, no, but maybe over time, uh, as the season goes on, maybe they give him a shot here, there, see, hey, what can Keith Mitchell do with this offense? And if they like what they see and he does better in the limited time that he gets snaps versus Justice Hill, then it's a possibility. Um, and his other question was, listening to the Purple Rain podcast, shout out to my guys, uh, Simply and Sudden, he said, uh, and he had a question i like your opinion on. Is this a Super Bowl or bust year for the Ravens? He said that we should at least make it to the conference championship game, but if we don't, we might see a change at the head coach position. What are your thoughts? Uh, so is a Super Bowl or bust for the Ravens? Yeah, for sure. Of course. Definitely. Like, I feel like that's really every year for the Ravens because they have not been in rebuild mode. They've just been retooling. Um, so yeah, it's definitely Super Bowl or bust. And if they don't make it to at least the AFC Championship, uh, will will there be changes? No, no. Because again, Harbaugh save. I think Har Harbaugh. The only way that he leaves the Ravens is when he walks out on his own terms. Um, now, should there be changes? Everything depends on exactly how the season goes. So we'll see when we get there. Next question came from my guy Devon, and he took it up a notch. He said, "Is Keaton Mitchell J.K. Dobbins' replacement?" Uh, hey, this is Devin, born and raised in Baltimore. Hopefully, I finally made it to one of your episodes. But do you think that the Ravens see J.K. Dobbins' replacement just so they don't have to pay him his worth and get a cheap running back that doesn't have a big injury history like Dobbins has? All of it is a is a possibility. It, it it really is. Everything just depends on how stuff shakes out. Uh, Eric DaCosta has talked about how he would like to get something worked out with J.K. Dobbins. Um, but hey, business is business, and we know stuff happens. Hopefully, J.K. Dobbins shows the Ravens this year, like, hey, this is why I need to stick around. Uh, this is why y'all need to pay me. This is why I deserve my bread. Hopefully, he can stay healthy for seventeen plus games, make a huge impact like he has when he's been on the field. Um, and then, again, as, as business is business in the NFL, we'll see when we get there. Question came from my guy Jordan. He said, contending year. How long of a leash do you think Owe and Ajabo have before Ravens try to trade one of them? Um, also, how long is the leash for Jalen Armour Davis and or Arthur Millette before the Ravens look at some of those DBs that are still on the market? Ooh, that's some really, really good deep questions, too. Uh, Adafi Owe, um, I think he has a much shorter leash than David Ajabo. Because uh, this is Dafe Away's third year. Um, this is the year where they have to decide on his uh, picking up his fifth year option or not. Um, so uh, I think this, this is the year where they make that decision on, hey, is he going to be a Raven for the foreseeable future? Uh, is, or is he going to just maybe hang around for one more year? Or is he somebody that we may end up moving off of and just 
looking for whatever's going to be next. Uh, he's obviously had plenty of opportunity. He's been out there a lot. He's been a consistent starter, except toward the end of last year. He was not starting. And I was like, ooh, yikes. So this year, hopefully he has a resurgence and, and just he, he hits that corner that we all been hoping that he uh, can get. As far as the job, bowl, nah, I mean, this is essentially like his rookie year. So the leash for him is extremely long. So you ain't got to worry about that. Jalen Armour Davis, I think for him, it depends on uh, what kind of opportunity he gets, what kind of playing time he gets. Because uh, it's going to be Rock Yassine. I would expect the other starter to be Ronald Darby and Jalen Armour Davis here and there. Um, so I'm not sure how much he'll be on the field. But so it, it's really hard to say for him. And the same thing with Arthur Millette. Arthur Millette may be on the field and like nickel packages and whatnot, be as, as a slot corner, whatnot sometimes. Um, but he's only on a one year deal. So I don't really consider him having like a long leash unless you're talking about like an in-season leash. But uh, as far as Jalen Armour Davis, it all depends on how much playing time he does or does not get. Here we go. Next question came from my boy King of Pugo. He said, engraving my boy. It's that time of year again. So here we go. I think this season will either be boom or bust. Firstly, I believe we will go 13 and 4 at best or 11 and 6 at worst. Okay. Lamar returns his all-pro MVP play and with his new weapons and OC will take us to the playoffs. All right. I'm liking it so far. Uh, Lamar. Now, once we get there, we all know anything can happen in a tournament, and I believe Lamar will get us to the AFC Championship game, and from there, it's obviously anyone's guess. Oh, okay, so you left it up for us to determine what happens after that. Uh, then he said, I I'm thinking Lamar will put up 4,700 total yards with 40-plus total touchdowns. I, I can see that, uh, especially 17 games. Uh, the defense will be solid, and I still have my eye on McDonald. The only way I see this season could turn into a bust is if we're decimated by injuries again. Yeah, that's the same thing I said. I agree. That's the only thing that I see that could hold the Ravens back. Uh, there's some other stuff too, but hopefully they ain't going to deal with that. But injuries would be the biggest thing, the biggest opponent. Um, he said, uh, in all in all, this is the most optimistic I've been for a season in a couple of years. I see why. Uh, I've always wanted to see Lamar in this kind of offense because we all, most of us, know how great he is and can be. I truly believe we haven't seen Lamar even hit his super uh, scion form yet. And most of all, I wanted to remove all the excuses from my mind that the previous offense gave him. Mm, that's real right there. Uh, I know Lamar will keep good on his promise and bring a Super Bowl to Baltimore so much. So I plan on being in Vegas during the Super Bowl, God willing. Uh, well, my friend, that's all I have for you. If this makes the cut, uh, thank you for reading this out. And I hope you and the family are doing well. And I wish you all the peace and prosperity. He said, P.S., I still watch every video even when I don't want to. <laughs> okay. Hey, I, I appreciate it because I know sometimes, hey, some of the videos, they, they don't be the best news on the Baltimore Ravens. And especially, I know you have. You've been around for ye literally years. I think you've been with the channel definitely at least four years, maybe even longer than that. But I appreciate you a lot. Uh, and I, I know you don't want to watch the video after a loss, but I appreciate you still doing it because we all get through it together. Next question came from Mars Rose. Said, Disrespect to Caillou Blue Kelly and Proche. Ain't Raven, it's been a bit since my last question. I wanted to ask your opinion uh, given the fan base's reaction to the roster cutdowns. Ravens fans want quality players at wide receiver and cornerback. This much is clear. However, our frustration at certain players feels out of place at times. Does anyone remember Proche's performance against the Bengals in 2021? In a December game, he caught seven passes on eight targets for 76 yards. Never got that amount of targets again in his career with us yet one bad preseason after losing his mother and we turn on him i can get wanting better production but why are we dragging his name through the mud when he was obviously not given the right chances before this year we know greg roman buried him on the depth chart that is really uh that's real right there um proche as a ravens wide receiver it's a, it's, it's a tough spot to be in it is extremely tough um and the chances are limited, uh, especially if you're down on a depth chart. With Prochet, and you know, football fans football fans are, can be really nasty. A lot of them. Not all of them. Uh, and, and not y'all. But football fans can be really, really nasty. Um, but football fans, it's all about, like the NFL always says, it's all about what have you done for me lately. And with football fans, it's, it's, it's all about recency. Recency bias is real. But So with James Prochet... Um, recently, last year recently, in the regular season, it, it was just rough for him. It was really rough. And that was 2022. You're talking about the game from 2021. Um, but that was 2022. So what they saw from James Prochet, with limited opportunities, it, it was a lot of bad in there. It was rough for him. And it, it was just mistakes. It was bad play. It, it was penalties. It was just it, – it wasn't a good combination of events and sequences for James Prochet. So then in, in preseason, so it's like, all right, you scratch that out. That was last year. But then this year in preseason – it, it was just rough and you felt for him, especially with all the off field stuff that he had going on and the personal stuff. But um on the field, it's like whenever the ball went his way, and it didn't go his way too many times, or a lot of times when the ball went his way, because he did have a couple catches. But 
for the big plays, it would just be always a big negative play. And it's like, oh, man, he just fell for him. But so that's, that's why I said for, for James Prochet, I felt like he just needed to change the scenery, start off somewhere new, somewhere fresh, uh, and hopefully just clear his mind and, and he will be in a better state of state of mind uh, wherever he goes next. Um, but, yeah, football fans can be really nasty, as we all unfortunately know. I mean, people can be really nasty, as we all unfortunately know. Um, and he said, then we cut Caillou Blue Kelly after one bad preseason. He's a fifth-round pick. You assume those guys uh, are going to be developmental when you draft them. It's a failure on our scouting and drafting if he was, wasn't ever good enough to be on the team. Ravens fans, again, dragged him through the mud. Um, and I think that, that's just fans being fans. Uh, not approving it or saying this right, but that's just fans being fans. Fans, hey, if Caillou Blue, Blue Kelly was on the team, there'd be some people calling him uh, the next Darrell Revis. But since he's cut, some people call him a bust. He's this, he's that, and then the third. Um, so it's unfortunate. John Harbaugh did say, hey, we felt they, they did want him back on the practice squad. Um, but Seahawks said, no, 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 we'll take him from here. Um, so, yeah, it, it just didn't work out. Uh, that is on because if, if he's a player that you felt that you cut and you, you cut him and you felt like, oh, he passed away, we might get him back. Then you didn't really have that much faith in him in the first place since you cut him off the team. It's like a, you wouldn't cut somebody off the team if you really had that much faith in him in the, in the, from the beginning. Um, so yeah, that, that is on the Ravens scouts, the scouting department for sure. And he said, what's your perspective? Uh, am I overreacting to justifiable criticism or is our fan base reacting disrespectfully to players when the real issue is our coaching staff? Okay. I should have read that part first, but I guess we already answered both of those questions. I appreciate you more. EDC and Harbaugh. Next question came from my guy, Danny. He said, Engraving, I hope this message finds you and your family in good health. I've been listening to John Harbaugh at the last two press conferences and EDCs. They both don't sound as confident in the new offense like they were when Greg Roman had just taken over. At that time, they were talking about how good they were going to be. Now they're just saying, we will see you uh, after week one. Do you think that is a problem or am I reading too much into the press conference? I mean, I, they knew Greg Roman's offense. Well, I mean, yeah, they knew Greg Roman's offense. They, this offense, they know. Um, and I just think it's like, all right, we'll see. Let, let's, let's see it. Uh, I think they just don't want to do too much talking or set too many expectations or anything like that. That's how I feel about it, too. Like, hey, I'm hyped for it. I'm excited for it. I, I, and I'm thinking it's going to be like this. It's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. But at the same time, I say, right, hey, seeing is believing. Because we could think everything we want to in the world. We could expect this, that, and a third. But we got to actually see it on the field. Not just on paper. But we got to see it on the field, see it be executed, see it, see it how it's drawn up and whatnot uh, to see the real thing. So I, I wouldn't really take too much of what they say into account like that. Gus Edwards. Next question came from my guy, Rav Ark. He said, hey, Graven, how you doing? Hey, we doing really good. Uh, I hope you and the family are all doing great. This is my first email, and I've been a subscriber since the 2019 dream season. Oh, yeah, that, that, that season was a dream. It ended in a nightmare, but, yeah, I, I get you. Anyway, he said, I would like to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, with the Ravens bringing in Todd Munkin, and for the first year in a long time, the Ravens will be shifting to more pass-heavy offense. Do you see Gus Edwards' spot with the Ravens in jeopardy? Yes, I do. I I, I do. Uh, but anyway, let's continue. He said, I know it's more likely, it most likely sounds crazy, but hear me out on this. No, I, I really don't think it sounds crazy, as a matter of fact. But let's continue. He said, this offseason, Gus Edwards hasn't had too many snaps with the first team offense. And we've seen more of Justice Hill. And in my opinion, I think Munkin likes, uh, likes Hill a little better in his offense. Of course, this year, Gus Edwards will be on the team. But for next season, do you see the Ravens possibly trading or cutting him from the roster in the running back room? If the running back room stays healthy and Ravens only carry three running backs as their pass game develops. I can see that happening. I, I thought he was in the last year of his deal, but I think the Ravens like reconstructed something or reworked something. So I'm not sure if he got one year left or two years left. Two years left, excuse me. Uh, but anyway, he said Gus Edwards is more of the ground and pound guy, but all us Ravens fans know that J.K. Dobbins has the strength to be elusive, but also hard hitting running back on crucial third downs, leaving Gus without a role. This is just a thought I've kept in my head, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you, and have a fantastic day. And as James Rocher is with the Ravens, I'm out. Wow. See, see we were just talking about it in the last question. Ravens fans are rough. Ravens fans can be rough, Oof. but um, yeah, with Gus Edwards, I, I I could I could see that for sure. Um, I could see just a, a limited role for Gus Edwards. Uh, my guy Jason put me on this from Huddle It Up Films. He um, and he talked about how because I hadn't even noticed. He talked about how just the Ravens had just not really been using Gus with the first team and whatnot. It, it would be just, like the same thing you said. Just as he would get the first team reps, it wouldn't be Gus, and and he would seldomly be used. Was it because his roster spot is locked, or was it because they just they don't have as much of a place for him like they did before. We're going to see. Again, like the, pre the previous question talked about with the, as far as the offense, we're going to see. We're going to see how all this plays out. We're going to see how the, all this stuff is worked out. 
And it's going to make for a fun season and, all, as always, an interesting Ravens season. Next question came from my guy, Enonic. How do you see the Ravens evolving as a team? Good afternoon, team. Keep it clean and graven. I hope you and the family are doing great. And I'm wishing you and yours all the best moving forward. I just wanted an honest opinion on what your expectations are for the Ravens after signing Lamar. The offensive uh, philosophy changes and talent acquisitions made this offseason. Many in sports media are acting as if the Ravens are a Super Bowl or bust team with anything less being a failure. I mean, isn't it? Wouldn't it be a failure, though? Like, think about that. You, you make all these acquisitions. You're a team that's, in the regular season, you've been winning a lot, but y'all just been hurt at the end. That's been the thing. The, the Ravens just end up, they, they start off good. Even when they hurt, they start off good. Uh, but then Lamar end up getting hurt, and everything falls apart. I mean, I understand because it is Lamar Jackson. That is your guy at quarterback. And he obviously everything that he can do, he has a huge impact on the team. But um, so why wouldn't it be Super Bowl or bust? That's why I, I, I think it's Super Bowl or bust for sure. Because Ravens, they they not some random team like, oh, they might catch fire or something. Like, no, they've been a good team, especially when Lamar's been healthy. They, they've been one of the nicer teams. So I would expect it to be super. And then with all the moves that they made, especially how they made them and whatnot, oh, yeah, it's definitely Super Bowl or bust for sure. And I think not winning the Super Bowl, it, it would be a failure. I mean, obviously 31 teams don't win the Super Bowl. It's only one team that wins it. But not, not that it would be a failure, failure, but that, that's, what you, that's the ultimate goal right there, win the Super Bowl. Um, you fell short of that Yeah you did fail um, But at the same time I think yeah AFC AFC championship game Should be the bar That should be Well not the bar But That would be Where the Ravens that, that That's where I think That's the least Far That they can go In my opinion So Yeah man Anyway um, He said Personally I don't expect Monkey's offense to hit the ground running with, without some uh, growing pains. I, I, I get you there. Uh, the Ravens have made the playoffs four out of the last five seasons with Lamar, but this season almost every team in the AFC is improving. It might be a little harder. Oh, yeah. It's going to be definitely be challenging because, yeah, AFC is loaded. Man. They loaded like crazy. He says, so well, I do expect hiccups in the beginning. I'm hoping the fruit of all those changes by EDC and a healthy Lamar will show itself at the end of the season with a much deeper playoff run. What are your thoughts? I love what you're doing on the channel. And although I haven't written to questions from subs in a while, I'm always watching. And let's go, Ravens. Appreciate that, Enonic. So, yeah, like I was saying, man, um, not winning the Super Bowl would be a failure. But I'm thinking the AFC Championship, that is uh, where the Ravens at least have to go as long as they stay healthy. And who knows, man? It, it's, it's so frustrating to think about, like, we will never know where Roy Ravens truly, how far they truly could have gotten. 2019, we saw how far they truly could have gotten because they got whooped in the playoffs against the Titans at the crib. 2020, we saw how, well, no, we didn't. We didn't because they beat the Titans in the playoffs and then in the Bills game, Lamar got hurt with the concussion. So we didn't, he could have came back. He could have lost. We, we'll never know. There's no closure. And again, the same with 2021 and 2022, there's no closure. So we don't truly know how far they could have gotten in those years. So this year, we want closure, but we want the Ravens to close it out with a trophy. Weakest points of the team. Next question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, hello, Engraven. Well, we all know this. Uh, by this point, the 53-man roster has been announced, but our concern is always the same. The cornerback and wide receiver room's health. Right, we pray for no uh, I words happening, but we start the season with a weak cornerback room in a very unproven but very highly talented on paper wide receiver room. But... What other weaknesses do you see we have on the team? For me, is the coaching. Although supposedly fixed with the Munkin and Lamar working together in the lab, we have to see it before they say it is a strength. And P.S. If the Ravens go down on corners, how long until you are cornerback two covering the cheetah on that New Year's game? Hey, Tyreek Hill, what's up, man? I, I remember a while back, he was like, hey, anybody want to race? And, and I sent him a DM. I said, yeah, I, I want to race. Never got back to me, but that's cool. Anyway, um, what are some of the weakest points of the team? Um... Yeah, I say right now, cornerback. Uh, and right now, because we don't know about it, Tyus Bowser's out. We'll see what a job bow and a Dafe away. It could be pass rush, but I, I wouldn't call it weak. I say more so unknown because we just don't know yet. So starting week one, we'll start to see. Um, it'll start. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't end up in a weak spot, but we'll see. Um, but right right now, I would say corner. I would, I would say corner, especially with Marlon being out. I mean, and really with corner, it's a lot of unknown, too, because we ain't seen none of the starters play this preseason. So a, a lot of this is just we're going to see. I, I think with weak spots on a team, we can't really call it a weak spot right now because, again, we just don't know how it's going to be yet. But really, I think not even just week one, but weeks one through four, 
then we'll really start being able to have a, a clear understanding of what weak spots there on a, there are on a team. Hopefully, there won't be any, but. I mean, be, being realistic, there's going to be something. Next question came from my guy, Hadi, who's been a patron for, wow, for three years. Wow, I appreciate that, man. He said, what's good, Big, big Bro and Graven? Now that preseason is over and the roster is relatively set, I wanted to ask what would need to happen this season uh, for you to consider it a successful season? Uh, like we talked about earlier, AFC Championship at least, uh, but obviously Super Bowl. Super Bowl, like, that's a, that's a successful season. That's a successful season. But definitely, um, technically, you could just say Ravens just staying relatively healthy. Uh, that would be a successful season because Ravens haven't had that since 2019. And they had a little injuries here and there, but they were pretty healthy in 2019. But them staying healthy would be successful right there. But Super Bowl, but if they don't win the Super Bowl, then them at least making it there to the AFC Championship, I think that would be a successful season. Uh, he said, given everything that happened from signing Lamar, adding Munkin, OBJ, Zay, etc., what does a successful season look like for you? AFC Championship, Lamar back to MVP form, winning a division, looking forward to rocking with you and team. Keep it clean for another season. Peace and blessings. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, a good mix of all of those. I mean, with the division, it, it, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight because you got the Bengals. They've been winning the division, I think, what, the last two years. Um, and, but Ravens, when Lamar's been healthy, they've been at the top of the uh, of the division. But he just ain't stayed healthy toward the end of the year. So the Bengals been like, "Oh, give me that." Uh, so we know what the Ravens are capable of. Again, health, health is wealth, health is wealth. Lamar back to MVP form. Yeah, whenever he plays, he never really gets out of it. He'll have some ugly games now. Like he done, he done had some ugly games over the years here and there. But overall, it's usually uh, MVP form when you think about it. So with all the new weapons. The new offense, I, I I would expect him to get back to that too, because uh, when Lamar's playing, he's usually in the talks for MVP. He's usually in the standings and the rankings and all that and whatnot. So, yeah, I, I think that is a realistic expectation. But again, health, health is the biggest, biggest, biggest thing. Um, that as long as Ravens can take care of that. They'll be in good shape. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, Dominic. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope everyone and everything is well. Sorry, this may be long, but I had two questions. After viewing the 53-man roster, I noticed that Malik Hamilton, excuse me, Malik Ham, uh, made uh, the roster, which surprised me, but I was happy to see. Being from Baltimore, I actually played against him in high school, and we were going against each other at the line of scrimmage. Oh, I, that's, I like that. That's cool, man. Uh, I was at left tackle, and he was a defensive end, and we were going at it all game. It's not every day that you see someone that you actually played against that made it from where you are, make it to the NFL. Hey, I, I love this, man. I appreciate this a lot. This is this is cool. I appreciate you sharing that with us, man. Uh, my first question is, what are your thoughts on Malik Ham's role, and could he, uh, the role that he could have on this team, and is this just temporary until Bowser comes back? Um, I don't know. We're going to see it, because right now, yeah, they did. They did put them through the initial roster but they put them on injury reserve to make room for josh johnson brent urban and oh there was one more i cannot remember who the, the third person was but they put them on injury reserve for now so i think right now uh it'll be more so a special teams type of thing um i don't think he'll have a big role right now uh and, and we'll see if it'll say a lot if they bring him back from injury reserve um, because that will show like, hey, Malik Ham, we got something for you right here, right now. We ready for you right here, right now. Uh, even if it is special teams, that would be big because an undrafted rookie free agent making the team and getting put on injury reserve so they can make a spot for veterans to come back on the team and then getting uh, getting activated from injury reserve, that will say a lot, man, because he's up against a lot. He was already up against a lot, but he made it this far. But if, if they activate him, that, ooh, I, ooh, that would be something right there. So I think um, for him, special teams will be it for now. Um, but here and there, maybe they sprinkle, sprinkle him in a little bit on defense. Maybe um, Raven, hey, Ravens offense, it's on you now. They blowing somebody out. He's like, hey, Malik Ham, go, go out there. Go out there, show us what you got. And he showed him something, and hey, he get more of an increased role as, as time goes on. Uh, anyway, he said uh, another thing that I noticed was that Brandon Stevens is still on the team. Now, I know that he has been bouncing between cornerback and safety, but I have seen enough. In preseason, it wasn't any better going against backups, but what are your thoughts on Brandon Stevens still being here? Uh, Ravens really love Brandon Stevens. They really do. They love Brandon Stevens. Um, and that that's shown from his rookie season. Um, with Brandon Stevens, I just think they, uh, they, yeah, he has been bouncing back and forth, so they just haven't figured out exactly where he's going to be consistently. Is it going to be corner? Is it going to be safety? It's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I think it will be very important for them this year. Pick a role for him, stick to it. Not the back and forth, not bouncing around. If he's going to be a corner, let him be a corner, and that's it. If he struggles sometimes here and there, okay. 
If he's going to be a safety, let him be a safety. And that's it. If he struggles sometimes here and there, okay. But in my opinion, bouncing him back and forth is not going to help with his development or his growth. I think they need to stick with something and just leave it there permanently. Don't mess it up. Don't try to, oh, you know what? We're gonna, no. Let him be whatever he's going to be and stick with it. Um, and then from there, just hope that with more reps, he continues to improve. Uh, with more time, his play continues to get better. With more experience, he just becomes a, a, an even better player, uh, Brandon Stevens. So, again, with him, we'll see. Because with Brandon Stevens, he's he's like – it reminds me of Chuck Clark. He reminds me a lot of Chuck Clark because Chuck Clark, he will be there right, right by the where the ball was, right by where the play was. But sometimes he will struggle to just finish the play. He will sometimes struggle to just make the play. Then that's what I've seen from Brandon Stevens, in my opinion. Is he a bad player? No. But he has struggled to just to finish the play sometimes. So I think once he can get over that hump, and that, that's a really big hump to get over, and it's going to take some time. It's a gradual process. But if he can get over that, then he'll be in good shape.